Hey, what's going on guys? How's everyone doing today? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Well, I just got done watching uh, the second in the, in the trilogy uh, that they're making on this Netflix original uh, little trilogy series that they're doing. Uh, this here is Fear Street Part 2, 1978. Of course, this is a uh, Netflix original. It's come out this year, 2021. I mean, I just got done watching it. And uh, as I was watching it, I was trying to write down some things and uh, and uh, try to keep focused on the movie as well. Now, uh, one thing I will go ahead and start with instead of the usual stuff that I start with is this movie, part two, the, the second part of the trilogy here, this part is miles better than the first one. Uh, the first one, if you go back and watch my uh, my kind of review on it, uh, no real spoilers in that at all if you want to go look at it. This one here captures uh, everything almost perfect uh, for this type of movie. The first one, on the other hand, it just it missed the mark for me. For whatever reason, I just didn't feel the vibe, and I was one of the one of the few people it seemed uh, that that didn't really jump on board with it. But this one here is miles better. You're gonna like this. So let's get to it, guys. All right. As usual, you know I have my handy dandy trusty notes. Okay. I'm not gonna be able to remember everything that I have to say, and I have a lot to say on this. And uh, this is going to be some spoiler action, okay, guys? I'm sorry, but I, I, this has to be said. There's a lot of stuff in here that I want to just say and get out there. Now, it's, I don't think it would ruin uh, your uh, experience watching the movie. I really don't. But just a warning that there are going to be some kind of spoilers here. So... Again, the movie is Fear Street 1978. This is part two of the trilogy of the Fear Street series, originally on Netflix. Um, let me go ahead and... I didn't even write this down. I always write down, like, my cast of characters and, uh, like, the plot synopsis. Just a quick, you know, kind of thing of everything. But right now, I'm just looking at uh, IMDb. And I'm just going to read the quick little plot synopsis uh, that they have. Shady Side, 1978. School's out for summer, and the activities at Camp Nightwing are about to begin. But when another Shady Sider is possessed with the urge to kill, the fun in the sun becomes a gruesome fight for survival. And that is just the basic. Uh, outline of the movie. Now, all three of these movies are going to connect. It's basically going to be one long story, but in different uh, parts and in different timelines, of course. So, uh, let's go over uh, the cast of characters. I'm going to read as best I can. I'm going to go ahead and give you several of the, of the cast, and I am going to butcher names, so just hang in there with me, okay? I'm really bad with names. So, we have Sadi Sink as Ziggy Berman, Emily Rudd as Cindy Berman. We have Ryan Simpkins as Alice, McCabe Sly as Tyler Slater, Jillian Jacobs as C. Berman, Matthew Z Zuck as Mayor Will Good, Kiana Madria as Dina, Benjamin Flores Jr. as Josh. Olivia Scott Welch, Sam Fraser, Brandon Spink as Young Goodwill, as Young Will Good, <laughs> uh, Sierra, Sierra, whatever, Ariel, uh, as Sheila, Marcel, Marcel LeBlanc as Becky, Eden Campbell as Annie, Ted Sutherland as Young Nick Good, Michael Provost as Kurt, Drew Shield as Gary, Joaquin or Jackin or Jack whatever Veen as Joan. Uh, again, I butchered some of those names, and uh, and I don't typically read off that many people in the cast, but I might as well. I'm just looking here at this uh, whole list that they have. 
And uh, and that Drew Shield guy, you're going to know him from uh, Halloween 2018. Uh, that's where I remember him from. Also, the one of the very main characters, Sadie Sink, as uh, Ziggy. You're going to know her from uh, Stranger Things. She played Max. So, anyway... Now the things that I have wrote down, I have I don't have wrote down in any real particular order, no real particular anything. Okay, so this is just going to be kind of a quick, like I said, spur of the moment. Uh, it's fresh in my mind, and I want to just throw it out there to you, kind of a, a review discussion uh, of the movie. So uh, basically, uh, this one picks up where the first movie left off. Uh, Fear Street 1994, I believe is what it was called. I could be wrong. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this one picks up kind of right there. And uh, it, it starts with uh, a story that leads right into taking us back to this story in 1978. Um, God, it's hard for me to, to say. Uh, but let me go ahead and say, uh, firstly... This should have been a standalone movie. Uh, mix kind of some old witch uh, uh, stories that we hear about, you know, from years ago. Mix some witch stories often with a uh, Friday the 13th, and you have this movie. Uh, it's got camp, it's got killer, it's got witch, it's got, you know, just some good tension some good moments you're gonna get some great stuff out of this movie if you like that kind of stuff and uh and they they honestly could have rewritten this movie and kind of edited out kind of the the beginning and end and just made it totally about a, a camp in 1978 and uh it, it would have been a fantastic slasher movie in my opinion uh, you don't get these every day that kind of give you this kind of uh, a, a story and kind of moving along and this kind of kills and and connections with the characters and this kind of uh, stuff. And what's good is this might be the second part to this trilogy, but really it's kind of new characters and you're and you're introduced to them and you're connected to them uh, instantly because you get good moments with them. But let me let me kind of try to stick to what I'm. Uh, going with here. Uh, now there. Now again, there are slight spoilers in here. Okay, that's just the way it's gonna be. Um, uh, 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 there's a, a, a few things that I noticed that was just kind of off. That was kind of like, you know, th those moments where you're like, ah, come on, you know. Um, th there's a point in, in the movie where. A girl gets stabbed uh, in the first movie, but then she's back in, instantly in the second movie, how it starts. Uh, did she go to the doctor in between the first movie and the second movie? Because it's supposedly pretty much, I would say, beat for beat. There's no real time lost. Did she go to the doctor or did she just put a band-aid over the stab wound? I don't know. Uh, there's a moment uh, where you have your character, uh, Ziggy, uh, she's accused of taking some money uh, from another girl for another camp house or a, a, another girl or whatever and uh, they're basically uh, the, the group of kids are chasing her down and they're basically gonna kill her you know basically looking to like really kill her hang her up and burn her and all that stuff saying she's a witch and a monster and all this stuff and then the counselors come in, they catch them, they, they, they stop it all. And basically they're kind of threatening uh, Ziggy, who all she did was maybe take some money. I don't even know if she did or not, but yes, yeah, she, she might have took some money. And, you know, wanting to really punish her, but then just kind of slapping the other ones on the wrist that were basically trying to kill the girl. So that was kind of odd. Um, there's another scene where it, it, it goes to uh, a, a guy and a girl having sex and then they get interrupted and within like the next scene I mean like boop camera switches over and they're dressed that was a uh, weird moment 
I, I've gotten dressed pretty quick, but not that fast. Um, and there's another part where the character Cindy Vermin, uh, she's helping another, she's helping her boyfriend uh, clean like uh, the the outhouse area, the kind of the restroom area, and they're scrubbing and all that. And she gets her shirt dirty, and she's like really tripping out and overreacting to it. And, uh, and there's another part uh, where she's scrubbing and the sponge breaks and she trips out again almost like it's the most dramatic traumatic stuff that's ever happened I just thought that was kind of weird and like you know who would trip out over that I guess her right uh, yeah like I said a while ago you're going to notice uh, the dude that plays Gary he's from uh, two th uh, Halloween 2018 thought that was kind of cool to see him in there Along with uh, the girl that plays uh, Ziggy, you know, from Stranger Things. I thought that was kind of cool. And and I'm sure some of these characters in here have been in a, a dozen different movies that you've probably seen. It's just, you know, those two stuck out to me. Um, you have kind of the cliche of bully girls, you know, uh, picking on a girl. And there's that whole kind of back and forth between them during the show uh, off and on so you know it's kind of a cliche thing that happens at camp movies a lot of times especially with kind of more kid you know supposed to be more kid uh, oriented and uh, there's always that that kind of bullying kind of thing that seems to go on a lot um, let me go on here uh, what I really enjoyed something about this is that uh, they are not afraid to kill kids. And I mean, awesome. Now, there's a lot of off-screen kills, but the fact is that they do it. And you can hear it. And later on, they might show, like, the aftermath of just, like, a quick glimpse here and there. So, I thought that was really cool to go there. There's, there's another part where they're, uh, if you know the story, they're kind of looking around for this kind of witch stuff, you know, where the witch might reside. They find some stuff, some clues uh, from the camp nurse, and then they go hunting for this uh, witch house or area or whatever. And uh, you have this part where uh, Alice and Cindy are in, like, the, the, the witch's caves or the witch's tunnels or whatever you want to say, and uh, they're down there far too long. The, the, that whole segment, I mean, is like an hour long. And it just, it takes too much time and it kind of draws out and I lost interest kind of in a lot of that. Uh, eventually, uh, they do get out and, uh, you know, the story progresses from there. But there's just a lot of wasted time down there. Now, there's some good back and forth between the two characters uh, that I enjoyed. You do get to learn a little bit about their history and why they're kind of at one another uh, uh, themselves uh, along with you know this is a separate kind of at one another uh, as opposed to the other one with Ziggy and uh, some other kids uh, but these two kind of have a history themselves and that you kind of learn a little bit while they're down there which is a good part but at, at the same time that that whole segment just kind of lasts a little bit too long uh, and there was there was I, I noticed something else is that there was two moments where two groups of people, two different scenes in two moments where these two people, something's happening, you know, something bad happens to the person and they yell to the other person, go, get out of here, go, you know, move, go, get. And then instantly, almost like the very next scene, you see it again with two more people. Someone goes down and it's go, run, get out of here, get, you know. Uh, that was kind of well, one of those overused things. Uh, you, you know what's going to happen. It happens in all these kind of movies. I, I don't know if I've ever watched a movie where it didn't happen. So, uh, let's see. Oh, and, and now again, we are talking spoilers here, guys. So, there's a point where uh, the two people, uh, they drop, they drop uh, the main killer guy. Uh, stab him, he drops, he falls, he looks like he's out. Happens in every one of these kind of movies though, where as soon as they, you know, ki kill the killer, 
they're all of a sudden, you know, they decide to just sit right there beside the killer and talk and discuss things. And the scene keeps going and going and going. And there's too much talking. And as time goes by, you're sitting there looking like, why are they sitting here? Would you really be sitting beside the guy that just tried to kill you? After you finally dropped him, you've seen all these different murders, you've been trapped, you've seen visions in your head, you've done all this kind of stuff. Would you really be sitting there beside of this uh, guy, killer, and uh, just chit-chatting? Or would you be running like uh, some Olympic sprinter? I'd be out of there. But nope. The old cliche thing is to sit there and talk until what happens? The killer usually ends up popping back up, something happens, and somebody gets killed, and then the other people take off, so you got this happening, and that happening, and happening. It kind of happens in all these kind of movies. I wish that they wouldn't have done that. I wish it would have been more realistic, like as in drop the killer and get the heck out of there and just and try to pick up the story, you know, uh, away from that spot. So that always happens. <laughs> um, like I said earlier, uh, this could have been a standalone movie and it would have been fine with me. I know it's a nice little trilogy thing that they're trying to do, but, uh, so far the first movie didn't impress me. It was, it still had the witch elements in it, but it also had a lot of scream elements to it and it just kind of missed the mark for me. There was a couple of good kills and then maybe a kill or two, or maybe one kill that I didn't like and. You know, that I didn't want to have happen, but I didn't know until it happened. I was like, eh, I didn't want that to happen. So, uh, and then, you know, some of this is towards the end of the movie, uh, where things are kind of winding down and they're figuring things out and they're having to do something. Uh, they're kind of on a mission. So they go to this tree and, uh, they're digging around, you know, they're trying to find this piece, this part to put another part with a piece, the piece part. Uh, and... They randomly dig a hole by this tree and just so happens that they dig in the exact spot where the thing is under the tree. I mean, I know they're pressed for time, for time because of things that are going on around them that are, you know, closing in on them. But, uh, you know, they just so happen to dig in the exact spot where they needed to dig. Eh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> and... As far as some of the characters go, I felt a real connection uh, with Ziggy and Cindy as uh, sisters. Uh, there's a good back and forth between them, uh, periods throughout the movie and especially kind of towards the end. And uh, you really feel a connection with them. And uh, I felt a real connection with Cindy and Alice as well. Uh, like, I, like I mentioned, especially when they're in the uh, tunnels, the cave, whatever. Uh, I felt a good connection with them there, and, and you kind of get to know them. Uh, there's really, to be honest, there's a good connection with all the characters. Now, I'm not talking about characters that have, like, two seconds of screen time. I'm talking about characters that you kind of see, keep seeing kind of throughout uh, this movie. Uh, you really have a good connection with them, and you kind of know this person, you know that person, you know their name, or, you know, you're kind of at least familiar with them, and then, you know, there's kind of a story between these two people and these couple of people, and maybe, you know, what have you. So, uh, they did a really good job as far as kind of giving me a sense of feel for, uh, you know, some of the characters. Uh, there's great death scenes, uh, like I mentioned before, and that's what we want. In this kind of movie, you just want good, awesome death scenes, and some that will shock you. And that's what we got with this. And I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I don't really get excited over movies too much, but I really enjoyed seeing, seeing them go, you know, a step beyond uh, what a lot of movies will do. Uh, this is a decent story, like I said, for a slasher. It does add the witch twist in there, which I think uh, is fairly original. I'm sure it's been done before, but... I don't know. I haven't done my research on that. But for me and the and the movies that I see that I watch, uh, this is pretty original and I enjoy it. And I think it was, like I said, standalone movie. Uh, yeah, you could you could literally not watch like the first uh, couple of minutes of this movie and then the last couple of minutes and just watch what's in the middle, and you're good to go. It's a 
really interesting. Interesting? I don't know if it's really interesting, but it's really fun. It gives you what you want. Um, and again, the camp. The freaking camp. That's what we want, man. A nice, good camp slasher. That's why I was saying that this reminds me a lot of, like, Friday the 13th. But you add that witch twist in there. You know, no witch stories and all this kind of stuff. And it twists it around a little bit and makes it even more interesting. It's not just a slasher with, you know, typical slasher elements. It gives you a little bit of twist in there. Uh, and I can understand for the trilogy, you know, I can understand that uh, they're wanting to expand on the story more and tell you more uh, about things. Because as of right now, we just, if we were to just kind of see this movie and this one alone, we would see... You know, we'd want to know more of why the witch came to be and what happened and led up to this and then, you know, the other movies and, and what have you. But like I said, if they were to re rewrite just a tad in the beginning, uh, you could really have this movie as a complete standalone movie. And I think that it would stand out and be uh, super awesome, even at that. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of kind of an, a normal uh discussion kind of slash review kind of spoilery kind of thing for me but then again it's kind of not i i was i wouldn't quite as boom 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 kind of as i normally am but again i'm kind of excited as you can tell uh i was really uh i was really pleased with what i watched again there was kind of a, some slow moments in there that i think they could have done without uh they could have shortened them up a whole lot and uh kind of made it a little bit more uh click along the way but comparing this to the first, uh, to the first of the trilogy, this is way more my style right here. This is way better. Uh, so I do recommend watching the first uh, of the uh, Fear Street, uh, 1994, and uh, and then go into this one, and then uh, the next one's going to be coming out pretty soon. So be on the look for it on uh, Netflix, of course. And uh, yeah, guys. Uh, I don't know how to grade or really rate the movie uh, because, you know, I'd rather just have discussions about them other than just, yeah, let me give it a score. But, you know, if I had to give this one a score, um, like say out of five, I would give this, if they rewrote, if it was a standalone movie and they rewrote a little bit and, and, and kind of fixed uh, some of the parts that dragged, it'd be a five out of five uh, for me. Because it was, it was fun, the characters, the moments, the kills, uh, the brutality of some of it. Um, but as it is, uh, it's going to be a part of a trilogy, so it's kind of hard to really give it a score. But if I had to say, you know, if I had to give it anything, I'd, I'd, I'd give it at least a 4 out of 5. And uh, that's just for the things that I mentioned. And uh, yeah, I recommend it. Uh, start with the first one, go into this one, and then be ready for the third in the trilogy pretty soon. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little enthusiastic discussion, review, kind of spoilerish uh, thing I did here. I, I hope you enjoy. I, I actually enjoyed watching the movie, and that's one I watch again. Now the first one, I don't really care to watch again. This one, I'd probably watch again on the big screen, on the projector. That'd be kind of fun to do. So, uh, anyway, guys, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Hey, leave in the comments what you think about the, uh, the two movies in the series so far. Uh, let me know what you think, all right? And don't forget, check out the playlist. All my stuff's in the playlist. Uh, you're going to find everything in the world that you'll ever want to see. My channel is diverse, and I, I, I cover a lot of different topics, hobbies, subjects, all that good stuff, and you're going to find something great. Lots of positive, decent, uh things in there for you to wrap your little heads around okay and when you get tired of this channel go check out my other channel old mental pickle and that's where i live stream video games only yeah i need to do more but i am playing halo 3 catch up with me on there like share subscribe comment all that good stuff all right guys don't forget get up get out get red do it to it and go watch this movie and then report back because it's pretty daggum awesome I think you're going to like it. We'll see y'all later. Mm -hmm.
Get up, get out, get around and do it, do it!